The cremation occurs in a crematory that is housed within a crematorium and comprises one or more furnaces. A cremator is an industrial furnace that is able to generate temperatures of 1,600 and 1,800 degrees to ensure disintegration of the corpse. A crematorium may be part of a chapel or a funeral home or may be an independent facility or a service offered by a cemetery. Modern cremator fuels include oil, natural gas, propane, and, in some areas like Hong Kong, coal gas. However, Coal and coke were used until the early 1960s. Modern cremators have adjustable control systems that monitor the furnace during cremation. These systems automatically monitor the interior to tell when the cremation process is complete, after which the furnace automatically shuts down. The time required for cremation varies from body to body, and, in modern furnaces, the process may be as fast as one hour per 100 pounds of body weight. A cremator is not designed to cremate more than one human body at a time. Cremation of multiple bodies is illegal in the United States and many other countries. Exceptions may be made in special cases, such as with stillborn twins or with a stillborn baby and a mother who died during childbirth. In such cases, the bodies must be cremated in the same container. The chamber where the body is placed is called a retort and is lined with heat-resistant refractory bricks. Refractory bricks are designed in several layers. The outermost layer is usually simply an insulation material, example, mineral wool. Inside is typically a layer of insulation brick, mostly calcium silicate in nature. Heavy-duty cremators are usually designed with two layers of fire bricks inside the insulation layer. The layer of fire bricks in contact with the combustion process protects the outer layer and must be replaced from time to time. The coffin or container is inserted, charged, into the retort as quickly as possible to avoid heat loss through the top door. The container may be mounted on a charger, motorized trolley, that can quickly insert it, or on a fixed or movable hopper that allows the container to slide into the cremator. Modern cremators are computer controlled to ensure legal and safe use. For example, the retort door cannot be opened until the cremator has reached its operating temperature. And United States federal regulations require that newly constructed cremators feature dual electrical and mechanical heat shutoff switches and door releases that are accessible from inside the retort. Refractory bricks are typically replaced every five years, because thermal fatigue gradually introduces fissures that reduce the insulating strength. For heavy-duty cremators having an inner sacrificial layer of refractory material, often cracks, slagging, Bulging and dislocation can be seen on this layer shortly after the cremator is put into use. Such cracks and fracture need not be disastrous, as this lining is sacrificial in nature it may just result in the development of a crack pattern in the lining. Those crack surfaces may be held together and closed by the lining compressive stresses that develop from thermal expansion when the cremator is heated to operating temperatures. However, the inner sacrificial lining needs to be replaced on a regular basis to offer proper protection to the outer layers. Some crematoria allow relatives to view the charging. This is sometimes done for religious reasons, such as in traditional Hindu and Jain funerals. The size of most cremators is standardized. Typically, larger cities have access to an oversized cremator that can handle corpse in the 440-pound range. Most large crematoria have small cremators installed for the cremation of fetal and infant remains. In some countries including the United States, there is increasing use of the alkaline hydrolysis process, trademarked as, resomation, which involves the use of lye heated with the body at high pressure, allowing the body to be broken down into its chemical compounds. The process is described by its inventors as more ecologically favorable than other forms of cremation. The box containing the body is placed in the retort and incinerated at a temperature of 1400 to 2100 degrees. During the cremation process, the greater portion of the body, especially the organs and other soft tissues, is vaporized and oxidized by the intense heat, gases released are discharged through the exhaust system. The process usually takes 90 minutes to 2 hours, with larger bodies taking longer time. Jewelry, such as necklaces, wristwatches and rings, are ordinarily removed before cremation and returned to the family. Several implanted devices are required to be removed. 
a pacemaker could explode, damage the perimeter, and potentially injure nearby staff. Spinal cord stimulators have similar power sources, and implanted drug reservoirs may produce smaller explosions. A specific variety of bone nail used in the femur and humerus is a hollow shell which is inflated with saline under high pressure to grip the interior of the bone and constitutes a bomb in the perimeter. In the United Kingdom, and possibly other countries, the undertaker is required to remove such devices prior to delivering the body to the crematorium and sign a declaration stating that no hazardous device remains in place. Contrary to popular belief, the cremated remains are not ashes in the usual sense. After the incineration is completed, the dry bone fragments are swept out of the retort and pulverized by a machine called a cremulator essentially a high-capacity, high-speed blender to process them into ashes, or cremated remains, although pulverization may also be performed by hand. This leaves the bone with a fine sand-like texture and color, able to be scattered without need for mixing with any foreign matter though the size of the grain varies depending on the cremulator used. Their weight is approximately 4 pounds for adult human females and 6 pounds for adult human males. There are various types of cremulators, including rotating devices, grinders, and older models using heavy metal balls. The grinding process typically takes about 20 minutes. Remains are mostly dry calcium phosphates with some minor minerals, such as salts of sodium and potassium. Sulfur and most carbon are driven off as oxidized gases during the process, although a relatively small amount of carbon may remain as carbonate. The ash remaining represents very roughly 3.5 of the body's original mass. Because the weight of dry bone fragments is so closely connected to skeletal mass, their weight varies greatly from person to person. Because many changes in body composition such as fat and muscle loss or gain, do not affect the weight of cremated remains. The weight of the remains can be more closely predicted from the person's height and sex, which predicts skeletal weight, than it can be predicted from the person's simple weight. Not all that remains is bone. There may be melted metal lumps from missed jewelry, casket furniture, dental fillings, and surgical implants, such as hip replacements. Large items such as titanium hip replacements, which tarnish but do not melt, or casket hinges are usually removed before processing, as they may damage the processor. If they are missed at first, they must ultimately be removed before processing is complete, as items such as titanium joint replacements are far too durable to be ground. Implants may be returned to the family, but are more commonly sold as ferrous slash non ferrous scrap metal. After the remains are processed, smaller bits of metal such as tooth fillings and rings, commonly known as gleanings, are sieved out and may be later interred in common, consecrated ground in a remote area of the cemetery. They may also be sold as precious metal scrap.